Well, hello there. It is Rebecca R. Jones with lesson four of the beginning Bible art journaling challenge. I've got another free download for you. This is a beautiful, really fun little thing. And again, I am using um, a, a different Bible this time because I have an accessible use, what you have. And then we're going to talk about a really special and important part of the biblical story. Um, and I'll get into that in a bit here. So first of all, what I'm doing is I'm just deciding how I want to position this and you can do the same. I've made the entire palm leaf so that you can kind of get to grips with it. And once you decide where you want, then just use the edge of a ruler. Don't push too hard, but use an edge of a ruler to kind of crease your edges where you want them and then you'll know where to cut. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it will give you some understanding of where you're going. Just fold it over your pages, fold it over your ruler, and then when you're done, you can just cut it out and it will be as if it's perfect for your Bible. And don't forget that you don't have to just do one palm leaf, you could do several. So you could um, put this palm branch in and um, then layer on top or beside or do a two page spread, or you could use different colors. The options are quite um, large here, but this is what I'm gonna do. And um, I decided on my color choices. And again, you can use your color guide from lesson one if you want to. I'm gonna go for this sort of teal green and Ionian green from Ink Tense. And remember, if you don't have watercolor then or if you don't have ink tents then just use watercolor uh, but don't let it stop you if you haven't got ink tents what you want to do I've just realized that my colors were backwards so I'm getting that organized and what you want to do is just load up your brush and then just do nice long strokes that are a bit sweeping and here what you learned in the last lesson in lesson three will really pay off now because what I'm doing is the same motion that I taught you from script lettering in the last lesson. So it's really important to watch these in order because I'm trying to build on the information that I'm teaching you. So um, in the creative part of it, that, it, I taught you how you you apply just a little bit of pressure and then you push further down to get that broad, wide stroke and then you lift up to get the narrow stroke at the end. And that same principle applies here when you're doing these individual leaves. So as you go, just keep on moving the Bible around in circles so that it is comfortable for your hand to make this stroke. What you don't want to do is make your body do all the work when you're doing art. You actually want your paper or your surface to move and you can stay comfortable where you are. I think that's one of the um, mistakes people make when they're first starting out, which makes it a little bit complicated and it's super easy to just move your surface around and make it comfortable. And then you make strokes that you actually like because you were comfortable when you made them. So I am going to take a moment here to just show you a flip through of some of the creativity that I have done in my Bibles because it's been a long time since I've done that and I just want to show you through this and just talk to you for a moment here. You know, these are just artwork but they mean so much more because the point of this is to actually connect with God through creativity. And every single one of these entries actually represents something. You may have followed along with many of these. You might notice some of these are from my, um, I guess you could call private collection. And all of this is part of my story with God that I can look back on and reflect with him and say, yeah, you taught me something here and I remember it very easily because I have something here creative reminding me to hope in God and to surrender to him. You know, these things really mean something to us. And I, um, I actually have a um, membership program called Heart to Freedom, which I will link. If you are in a position where you do have a little bit of money each month and you actually want to um, be a part of my community, who are taking these moments and um, I guess bumping it up a bit. We're spending more 
effort looking at our relationships with God and um, I'm just doing my best to pour into people. I do a lot of things like these challenges and you'll see me show you a little workbook here in a minute. I don't want this to just be art. I want you to be able to really dive into stuff and this is um, the kind of stuff that you get to be a part of as part of that program. So if it's something that you're interested in, I've got a bonus library. All of my freebies are actually connected to their tutorials and um, have the scriptures written out. All the things that you guys need from me, um, I've put it in one program and we've got an amazing community of people who are connected and I um, would love to have you join. It's just at hearttofreedom.com and um, so just wanted to tell you about it in case it's something that you're interested in because I know it's making a difference in other people's lives and I would so love to pour into you more than I'm able to in these challenges. Um, so anyway, this is a very uh, special section of scripture in Luke in chapter 23, verse 33, all the way through chapter 24, verse 12, we're talking about the crucifixion of Jesus, how he is buried, and then he is resurrected because he raises from the dead. And this is a hugely important section of scripture, as you can imagine. And I am so grateful that we have a God who did not just die, but he rose again in order to save us from ourselves. <laughs> the things that we don't get right, it's okay because we've got a God who has stepped in to help us and he wants to partner with us so that we can um, impact the world for him and do positive things for the world around us. And I know that we don't always get it right and you know, I don't, you don't, we are on a journey here, but um, make sure you do that. Now, just notice here, I'm, again, referencing the importance of finding a comfortable position for your strokes. Just move your supplies around, move your surface around, work with yourself in, in a way that is really comfortable for you, and you're going to create something that you like a lot better. So, as we go on in this process, um, just know, remember, over on the blog post, which I will also link, there is always way more information. And I've got a lot of um, information like context videos and that kind of thing. And this is just a Ziploc that has the little zipper taken off of it. And I've put a little cardstock in it. And it's acting as a little barrier so that I can comfortably just do a stroke right next to the edge of the paper. And it's not going to make any difference to the other side. So I'm not going to paint onto my other surface. If you're using watercolor, then it's not going to dry as quickly and as fastly. So, um, and by fastly, I mean, it's not going to stick to the paper as easily. So um, what you want to do is just make sure that it's dry before you're putting your hand or wrist over the top of it. And just keep that width there and just keep doing your strokes. And then we'll, you know, pull out the pens. So in this series, I've shown you through how to use colored pencils and then how to do this water media stuff like ink tents and watercolor and we'll add pen to it. And I can't believe that we're in lesson four. We've already made it halfway through this series. And I honestly feel that this is a really important topic because really, um, so many people focus on this section of scripture and don't really grasp the value of what this brings us. Jesus did not die on the cross and stay there. He actually rose from the dead. And that is the important thing. We, we don't want to be in a position where we are con convinced that our God is still on the cross. And you may have to think about that for a moment to understand where I'm coming from. But... I think it can be very easy for us to misunderstand what we read in scripture if we don't really um, hold as a core value that Jesus rose from the dead. If, if we don't recognize that he is alive and well, then we um, end up making in our minds a very small God and we read the scripture through this lens that he's not really big enough for our problems or is not really big enough to overcome things in our life or help us to overcome the things that he wants us to overcome. God has given us everything for life and godliness, and he is amazing. 
at helping us to achieve what he puts on our hearts to do. So if he puts it on our heart to do something, then we are obligated to pour ourselves out to make that a reality. But we can't do that if we think that he is only one who died on the cross and we don't really fully recognize the value of what we got with his resurrection. And the Bible says that that word saved, you know, it says that we were, um, that he died on the cross and rose again so that we could be saved from our sins. That, that word saved that you find in the Bible, it actually is a word in, in the Bible, um, in the original language that means sozo, and our sozo is that word in English, um, which means saved, and sozo means saved, healed, and delivered. Literally, on the cross and in through his resurrection, Jesus saved us, healed us, and delivered us. All three of those things. We are able to step into so much with God as a result of that. Now, you may be seeing a little bit of what looks like bleed through on the other side, but it is drying quickly and it will be absolutely fine. Notice that these have a little bit of a different width depending on the situation. I've decided to go for this super fine, which is the S. And I'm going to do this thing, which I think you're probably not going to love, but it looks fun and it is to do things messy. So what I'm going to show you here is deliberately go out of the lines. Hold your pen a little bit further away from you and then go through and literally scribble with a bit of a wave and sometimes be inside the line, sometimes outside of the line, but keep the general shape. And what you'll end up with is this very playful, um, pretty look. And if you feel that you want to make sure that you can read the scripture through it, I would suggest that you don't do the pen because I think that there is, um, it's a little bit harder to read it. It's definitely not impossible, but it's a little bit harder. Remember, keep your pen kind of halfway there and you'll see here in a sec, I'm going to slow down to full, this is real time here for a moment so you can see how long I'm taking to do this and what that looks like. And then I'll speed it back up again to a pace which you can afford to sit and watch. <laughs> and I just want to encourage you to get in the word with me. You possibly signed up for this series when we started. If you did, then please stick with me. If you are new, then start at the beginning and go through this. There's six lessons in this series and I'm just going through some basics. But I think also this is really important. And they're not basic when you think about all that we get from this. Jesus is alive and well, and he died for you and I, and then he rose from the dead for you and I. What a gift. I am so grateful. And why the palm branch? Because in many cultures and uh, throughout the Bible, it often represents victory. And that is really what happened. Jesus is the victor. I really appreciate you joining me. Pop over to the blog, get this download. And that's it. Remember, you are so loved. Jesus loved you enough to die on a cross for you and raise from the dead.